the bomb demonstrators mobilised in force in Trafalgar Square. To make sure they didn't march to Parliament Square, 4,000 police were drafted to the area. Most of the anti-nuclear brigade declared that they didn't mind going to prison if necessary. Their demonstration was on Battle of Britain Sunday, at the time when the Thanksgiving service at Westminster Abbey was attended by the Prime Minister. It is now 21 years since the heroism of a few airmen saved the country from defeat. The annual tribute keeps their memory fresh. Air Chief Marshal McAvoy represented the Queen. After the service, the exhibition of some of our new defences was inspected by Mr Macmillan. The jets and rockets are far removed indeed from the Spitfires and Hurricanes that beat the Nazis in 1940. But the men of today are of the same valiant breed. Twenty-one years ago, the H-bomb was unheard of. Today, the bravest pilots would avail us little, so at least believe the anti-nuclear thousands up and down the country. They say that unless Britain leads the world in banning the bomb, atomic war will be inevitable, and then the whole human race will be destroyed. The big sit-down included Vanessa Redgrave, Sheila Delaney, and fellow playwright John Osborne. There, too, was the author Sir Herbert Reed. They followed the tactics Gandhi made popular in India, passive resistance. The movement will grow, believes Sheila Delaney. Support comes from some of the churches and is not confined to young people. On this occasion, the police were instructed to show no force and complaints against them were few. The fact remains, perhaps rather comically, that to sit down in a public thoroughfare in the cause of world peace is a breach of the peace according to law. So the authorities won't allow it. When some became less passive, many were arrested. It's pretty safe to say that in most countries at this stage, there'd have been a riot. The police had coaches and vans laid on, foreseeing that they'd have to arrest so many, transport to the police stations would be essential. Eventually, 1,314 people were arrested, making record police court business next day. All this surely could only happen in Britain. Don't ask where it gets us. We're a free country, and at the expense of a lot of small fines, the demonstrators expressed themselves in their own way.